Welcome to Ann Sleep. My name is Tommy Likatezi. Today, I have the pleasure of hosting ENT, Dr. Cameron Jaffrey, and sleep dentist, Dr. Robert Gorelick. We will be discussing TMD and sleep. Welcome to the program, Dr. Jaffrey, Dr. Gorelick. Thanks for having us. Yeah, here. thank you so much. So, Dr. Jaffrey, um, tell us, what is TMD? Sure. So, if we talk about TMD, we should also talk about TMJ, right? So. TMJ is a temporomandibular joint. And if you know people at home want to put their fingers right in front of the ear here, open and close your jaw, you'll more than likely feel a little bone moving back and forth. That's the actual articulating joint that we call the temporomandibular joint. TMD refers to temporomandibular disorders, okay? And that means that that joint, for various reasons, is having discomfort, could be pain, crackling, popping, locking, different things that Dr. Gerlich knows in a lot more detail. But uh, certainly the disorders are quite common, very high correlation with sleep disorders and TMD problems. What type of specialists treat TMD? So TMD traditionally probably first hits the ENT doctors first because the primary symptom you get is ear pain. And it can be quite significant ear pain. I have patients that wake up from sleep from it, that have it during the daytime. And the fact is they don't realize they're, they're grinding or clenching, they just have this severe ear pain. So the first stop is usually at the ENT doctors. And what happens is we examine them and say, hey, look, your eardrum is clear, your ear canal is clean, uh, fine. Examine the TMD, the TMJ, we realize this is actually a, a TMD problem. And that's where traditionally uh, dentists with sleep training and oral surgeons that do TM, TMJ, TMD work will refer to them. Um, Dr. Gorelick, what type of symptoms do you see in your TM, uh, TMJ or TMD patients that you look for? What I look for really that's important is a questionnaire that I give them that asks them about facial pain and where that pain is. Oh, uh, do they have headaches? Do they have pain, you know, in their muscles that open and close the jaw? Um, is it radiating? Okay, is it right under the muscle? Uh, do they have a limited opening? Can they not open their mouth really wide? Does their jaw lock open? Or does their jaw lock closed? Do they have ear pain? Some are just muscular. Uh, some are actually from trauma. Trauma either from an accident or from clenching. Big, I would say more than 50% of the patients are clenching and grinding. But we can't just treat the clenching and grinding. We have to ask the patient and try to get to the root cause of why they're clenching and grinding. Sure, we can just put a little Botox into that muscle and get them to stop, but that's not really the permanent treatment. Okay, we have to get through to the underlying cause. So when you say cause, what are some of the causes um, that you mention? Um, I hear one of these causes maybe sleep breathing disorders. How does, what's the relation between that? The literature states that there's primarily four causes. Now we know that the number one cause is some kind of a breathing disorder, whether it be snoring, whether it be obstructive sleep apnea, whether it be upper airway, airway resistance, because when we aren't breathing well and our oxygen levels are going down, we're exaggerating our stress response. And when that stress response gets activated, it's stimulating these, these muscles in our jaw to protrude. They're actually doing chin thrusts in their yeah, sleep. That's right. And the, the number two you know, reason could be medications, you know, too much alcohol, too much caffeine, stimulants, we found out that SSRI, serotonin reuptake inhibitors, they're great for reducing anxiety, but we don't really know why the pharmacology is causing clenching and, and, and grinding increases. And, and, I, and I would question even going further, conditions like alcoholism, depression, anxiety, there's a high correlation with sleep problems. Absolutely. So are those medications somewhat treating the symptoms of the sleep and the TMD disorder is part of that? So it's interesting how you go into deeper layers. Ultimately, it's a sleep issue that's a foundational problem for a lot of conditions. And you can treat both of them at the same time, I'm assuming, as well? So with most of these patients, you know, we've got this cushion that sits on the jaw, okay? And I like to tell my patients it's like a hoodie on your head. And, but it's got to stay there. It's right. got to stay there. And when we open maybe just a little bit, it stays there. But when we open a little wider and we hear that click or pop or, you know, that grating noise, it's because the hood is coming off and it's anteriorly displacing. And the posterior fibers of that disc are where all the nerve fibers are. So if they start to hit that posterior part, they're in pain. 
But if we advance their mandible with a little mandibular advancement device, like we do with sleep, we're keeping the hoodie on the mandible. They're going to click a lot less. And, they, and the patient will sit there and go, oh, yeah, my jaw's a little forward. I'm not clicking. I'm not popping. So if they have sleep apnea, we do both. If they don't have sleep apnea, we still treat with a mandibular advancement device. In fact, what was interesting was when I was studying for my diplomat, I, I had to uh, you know, read a lot of articles, read, read a lot of books. One that I found most interesting was that many years ago, when they were treating TMD with mandibular advancement devices, they couldn't understand why the patients were coming back saying, not only do I feel better, but I'm sleeping better and I'm not snoring. And they finally found out right. why. Yeah, we're getting the tongue out of the airway. You know, we're making the, the uh, airway less collapsible at the same time. You mentioned early on that you don't want to just put a bite block into somebody because you mean masking. And I agree with that totally. I think I treat a lot of my nasal airway patients the same way. So if they have a deviated septum and they're not snoring I'm, or having TMD problems, I'm not as inclined to do a sleep study. But if they do have TMD pain or they do have snoring or sleep disruptions, I say, listen, at some point you do a sleep study. Because what can happen here is I can treat your nose and I might just end up masking your sleep apnea, right? right? And that's something we have to be very aware of that. And this is another reason why you do studies. You know, you don't want to cover up symptoms and take something from moderate to mild. And meanwhile, they're still having sleep apnea issues. This is where it's very important to be thorough like that. Thank you for coming on to the show today. Yeah, thanks for having us, Tommy. Pleasure being here. Well, that concludes this episode with Drs. Cameron Jaffrey and Robert Gorelick. We encourage you to visit wholeyou.com to learn more about sleep breathing disorder treatments. The sleep professionals in this video series teamed up with Whole You to spread healthy sleep education across America and were paid for their appearances.